Welcome to IC Medan Online Campus. We're so glad that you're here with us. If this is your first time attending our service, please check out the links in the description to find ways to connect with us here at IC Medan. Now, before we worship and hear today's message, we have some announcements for you. Have you joined any life groups? A new semester of life group has started. Life group is what we call our small groups here at IC Medan. If you're looking for a fellowship or a community, then head over to our website and browse the groups that are available. We believe there's a group for you out there. Remember that life is definitely better together. Hey teens, Boy and Brave is back too. If you're in the great SMP and SMR, we have a group just for you. Boy and Brave Junior High meets every Saturday and Boy and Brave Senior High meets every Friday. Check out the full details of the group at our website. It's gonna be fun. Church, we want to say thank you for your participation through giving. With your giving, we're still able to continue the mission and reach people in the city of Medan. To give today, you can check out the information on the screen. You can give via online transfer or scan our QR code. You can also find this information in our website. Once again, thank you for your generosity. During the message today, you can follow along with the slides, take notes, and even reference the Bible. All you have to do is open the YouVersion Bible app, select More, select Events, then just select the live event I see Madam. That's all the announcements we have. And now, let's worship God together and see you at the church. This morning, come on, let's stand on your feet. Come on, oh, I searched the world, but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty 
praise and treasures that fade are never enough Then you came along And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, come on! Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you I'm not afraid To show you my weakness My failures and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause it's the God of the mountain It's the God of the valley there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me
many fields like the dark lingers longer than a night when the shadows feel like joy are you chasing me down tell me where could I run from your life where could I hide In your precious star There's no hiding from your love Highs and love Lord, you with me It away it goes To the rise or to the fall
No. 
not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you For a minute was I forsaken The Lord is in this place, yes The Lord is in this place, Lord Come Holy Spirit Try points awaken The Lord is in this place, Lord Come, the Lord is in this place Say it again the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is, the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this Hi, I'm Bryce Soltis. And I'm Fanny Soltis. And we are missionaries going to Turkey, to the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah, I am an American. I grew up in California and I started following the Lord once I went to university. And my third year in university, I felt God called me to the missions field. And uh, ever since then, I have looked for what, what, what that looks like. And after I graduated university, I went to Turkey. And then I went back home for uh, to America for a few years. And then a few years ago, mm -hmm. I uh, felt the call back out. And so I went to Bali, Indonesia, amazing place, and met the best Indonesian, <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> my wife, Venice. <laughs> yeah. So hi, I'm Venice, and uh, we are sent. Uh, by ICA Surabaya, that also this or American organization called Kairos Global, and uh, Kairos Global is a sending organization. So other than uh, my local church, ICA Surabaya, I love you, where I grew up, <laughs> and that's Surabaya is my hometown. Uh, but we also are a part of Kairos Global as a sending org. And we just got married, uh, like what Bryce said, uh, we were husband and wife, and we met in Bali during our serving time for the Lord uh, there. And during our time uh, of serving the Lord in Bali, we saw so many fruits uh, happening, not only uh, the people come to Jesus because we preach the, the gospel, we also uh, fed them with the food. And what is the food? It's not only the rice bag and all this little package sambaku bag, but also to feed them with the right food that is the gospel. And as a result of that, we have church. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. We were able to start a church uh, in Bali and we were able to, our ministry was able to feed over 5,000 families uh, so far and it's still, and still going. Um, yeah. it, it's been, it was an amazing time of fruit that we were able to see there. Mm -hmm. And so currently we are living in Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. where we are serving Kairos Global to build a training and sending school because we really experienced firsthand that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Yeah. So right now we're in America to spend our first year of marriage, uh, to just invest in, in our marriage, in our relationship, so we have a good foundation, uh, and also to f find more workers and to mobilize more of the church. So yes. we, have a, we have a heart to mobilize the church mm -hmm. in America and in Indonesia as well. 
believe that Indonesia has a, a such a rich population, mm -hmm. uh, both in finances and and in um, the love for the Lord and the love for people. And we think it's time for Indonesians to go, uh, as Finnis is a forerunner for that. Yeah. And so, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so God's vision for us is that we have the heart to reach the unreached people group, and especially in yeah. Turkey. Do you want to show? I have a globe. Mm -hmm. We have Africa, yeah. Turkey, right here in the Middle East, yeah. connecting to Europe. Yeah. Amazing. So Turkey is uh, mostly uh, a Muslim country that are yeah. mostly Muslims. 99% non-Christian. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of, like 99.8 I think. Yeah, yeah wow. so it's, it's really, uh, yeah, the chances for them to know Jesus is really, like, really small. And like Brett said before um, in the introduction, uh, that we uh, want to see people, more people come to see Jesus. So what what is God's vision for us? Uh, number one is that this, uh, to reach out all this uh, unreached people group in Turkey, obviously. And number two is that we want to build a house of prayer because eventually, uh, all things go down to praise and worship. If you look at the book of Revelation, everything, every creation points to Him. So praise and worship uh, in the heart of uh, the people that don't know Jesus. And isn't that incredible? That's like, um, yeah, all, if, wouldn't it be beautiful if all mankind can bow down and worship one King, that is Jesus. So. Yeah. And we, uh, on top of that, uh, we also have uh, the heart, especially Bryce, for church planting. So that's uh, that's what's God's vision for us. And yeah, yeah, we uh, we want to build a house of prayer to be a unifying force uh, yeah. in the church, especially yeah. in Turkey. Yeah. Uh, and we we want to plant churches uh, just like we did in in yeah. Bali. Yeah. And so, how you can pray for us, though? Yeah. Uh, you can pray for us one by our, with our marriage. Mm -hmm. It's our first year of marriage, and has anyone been married that's listening to this? You know, you need prayer in the first year. Well, <laughs> you need prayer all the years, but especially the first one. Uh, so pray that Finesse has patience with me. And <laughs> no. We have patience with each other. Yeah, we're, we're both. Yeah. We're both messed up. Yeah. Uh, so pray for that. Pray for a solid team uh, as we build. Um, as we want to build a team with us, uh, it would be amazing to have. Indonesians with us too, yeah. uh, so we want a uh, mixed team to go with us so we can start something amazing. Yeah, and, and the last one. And the last one is an open door and just God's provision overall for us to go with the right door with the right people, right connection, uh, and of course the provision to go there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you all so much for listening to our video and being a part of our journey. Yeah, thank you, I see Madan. God bless. Bye. Hello, hello again, online service, Icy Medan, what's going on? It's nice to see you guys again, and we are now part three of X Marks the Spot. I'm so excited to share today's word, but before we begin, I want to say hi to all the VIP. That's right, if this is your first time watching us online and just hanging out with us, I don't know how you got the link, I don't know how you got lost here, on YouTube and all the semantics and it's the algorithm it's saying like you got to check us out. I'm just so glad that you're watching to this point because we are in the middle of a series that we want to talk about mission and what does mission mean for all of us as Christians and if you're not Christian no problem I just want us to to acknowledge you and if you're in the chat right now online people uh, just say hi to all the VIPs just say hello welcome just hit hit them up on the chat and just let them know that they're so so uh, welcomed here on our online service at IC Medan. My name is Ardo. I'm one of the pastors here in IC Medan. Uh, hello and salam dari Pastor Chris and Pastor Kerry as well, all over in America. And they send their regards and they also want to let you know how much they love you and how much they miss you. Absolutely. But I'm just so excited. We're going to get, we're going to jump straight into it. Um, and if you, if you missed part one and part two, if you're, on, you're watching on YouTube, it's probably on the recommended videos on your, on your right. But if not, you can visit our YouTube channel and make sure you 
like, subscribe, and just um, follow us everywhere on social, especially on Instagram, uh, IC Meran, at IC Meran. But for sure, on our YouTube channel, you can check out part one, where Pastor Chris kicked us off amazingly. Part two, we just began, and now we're in part three. So this, this whole series invites you, you and I, to embark on an adventure to find the treasure that acts to mark the spot on the map, right? This is what it's all about. And part one, we learned from Pastor Chris that missions is personal because Jesus is the gate and also the good shepherd who knows us by name intimately, who protects us, not like a hired servant, right? Hashtag coyote story. For all of you who know, you can LOL in the chat. Uh, <laughs> who's made a way for you and I to be one with the Father. So th therefore, mission must be personal. And because missions is personal to Jesus, it must be personal to us. Last week, we learned that missions is really our story. And I don't want to spoil too much if you haven't watched that one. But if you're the prodigal son, it's not all about what you did. It's about relationship with him, right? Your father. And if you're the older son, it's not what you've been doing or what you're doing. It's about, guess what? Relationship with the father. So before we even become part of God's family, we were all lost sons and daughters, but our father was waiting for us and waiting for us to come home to him. If we're already in God's family, never forget that our father's heart is for those who have gone astray. Now this week, today, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, I want us, I want all of us to be invited to see that missions is all around us. And that is the title of today. Missions is all around us, okay? What if I told you that it is when we step outside our house or in the chat rooms or joining Zoom or right now on our online service to interact with people? That's where missions is happening. It is when we are waiting for that package or that delivery from Gojek or Grab Food and saying hi to that driver. And by the way, please tip him as much as you can. I, I try to do that as well. It, missions happens when we are meeting and greeting our satpam, right? At the gates of our housing complex by the entrance of the mall or the basement entrance, right? It is when you're waiting in line at the groceries, right? You know what I'm talking about. Super slow people in front of you. Mm -hmm. And also super slow clerk at the cash register. I don't know why I always ended up going to the slowest line. There's like eight of them, and I picked the slowest one. That's another day for another time. It is, missions is happening when you're at school. Students, man, when you're joining that Zoom class, when you go hybrid and you go in person, missions happens there. It is when you're at the office, that business meeting, that business partner that you're meeting, or that uh, a business client that you're meeting. It is when you're driving, hallelujah, right? When you're driving, I'm sure we have all that stories if, if you're from Eran, Surabaya, or Jakarta, We've all had stories of driving in Indonesia. It is when you're at home with your family and maybe someone doesn't have a relationship with Jesus in your house. You see, missions is all around us. It is not just when we pray, not just when we give and go out to our community during a uh, 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 serve day. It is not just when we pray and give to our foreign missions. And I hope you've been praying about them, uh, for them, and also giving to them as well. But you also give to to IC Medan, if you could label missions or, or you've been doing it, we've been, we've been supporting them for a very long time now. It's not just when we're in the middle of mission series. So I'm hoping and praying, and I, I speak for PC as well, Pastor Chris, that it is not just during our mission series that we're talking, that we're doing missions. It is all around us. It is all the time. We're going to talk, talk about the timeliness of it next week as well. All of the above is great. So never stop doing them, but missions is much, much more. Missions is literally all around us, in and out of season, our everyday interactions with people, our responses, chats, posts, comments, and stories, and even our likes on social, they all involving missions about all around us, and it's found all around us. So I don't know how happy or glad for you to know this, but if you're a Christian, mission is all around you and me. It's all around us, and so you might be feel good about it, you might feel bad about it, but no matter how you feel about it, Christian, it is true. In fact, Jesus talked about this right before he ascended into heaven after his resurrection. So we're going to read that first passage today. There's a lot of them, so we're going to go straight into it. Acts 1, verse 1 to 8. And this is what uh, was recorded in the book of Acts. And Jesus talks about this, you know, that, that missions is really all around us. So I mean, let's just begin and dive right into it. In my first book, I told you. Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach. By the way, his first book is the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Yes, fun fact, 
Uh, spoiler alert, is the same author. Until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles uh, uh, further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Verse 4, once he was eating with them, he commanded them. Now watch this. We're going to talk more about this. Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But this is the key uh, verse today. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here, and I can't wait to get to it, but let's get to it. jump right into our first observation. Number one in your notes, missions is prompted by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have to talk about this. We have to mention that what, even though it's all around us, it needs, we need to acknowledge that it's prompted by Him. Once when He was eating with them, He commanded them, all right, verse four, do not leave Jerusalem till the Father sends you the gift He promised, as I told you before. This is an amazing passage because, I mean, fun fact, this is where the Trinity are all mentioned, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so they're all mentioned together. Jesus is giving this command. The Father is the one sending the promised gift. And guess who is the promised gift? The Holy Spirit. This means that mission has always been about God, prompted by all three persons of the Trinity. Here's a takeaway, okay? Don't worry, it's all about Him. He's in charge and He'll see it through to completion. Missions is prompted by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This means even without you and me, God could send someone else. That deserves a whole other message. But it's true because it's prompted by him. So therefore, it is initiated. It will, be, it will end by him. Because mission is prompted by God. May we open our hearts and minds to obey his commands. Which leads us to our second observation today. Missions is not about knowing everything, but about doing what we can. I want to say that again. It's so good. Missions is not about knowing everything. Okay, You don't have to know everything. You don't need a PhD for you to begin missions, but it's all about doing what we can, doing what we know. It's not about knowing everything, but what we know now, what I know now, we got to do. This is crucial because some of us are unwilling to do anything until we know everything. Do you know those kinds of people? It might be yourself. Don't feel bad because we all have that tendency, right? We want to make sure that we are so qualified, that we are so good, that I am primed and ready for it. But listen, that's not how God's kingdom works, okay? Sometimes you need to feel like you need to know how to preach first. You need to know how to share. You need to know how to answer every question. You need to go through all apologetics class in the world and all those webinars and watch all the YouTube videos. But God is about knowing his heart, knowing that he's faithful and that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And it's about knowing how to love the person in front of you and not win arguments, for example. You see, in, verse, uh, in Acts 1, verse 6 and 7, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those times and dates, and they are not for you to know. See, the apostles, they missed the whole point of Jesus' resurrection. They still think it is about freeing Israel from the Roman rule and get back to the good old days of King David. But Jesus' mission is about the world around us, not just a group of people. It's about the world, not just Israel. This means we worry about the wrong things when it comes to missions, right? Now, I'm not saying don't prepare at all, right? Um, I'm not saying don't learn by asking the right questions. I'm not saying go blind and know zero about witnessing and sharing your faith. What I'm saying is to not worry that uh, that you may not know everything, okay? Uh, whatever, whatever is specified by God, we would just be uh, faithful. What we must be concerned about is the mission of God that is all around us. Don't worry about what we don't know. Don't worry about what we're not in charge of because God is in control. He's in charge. He prompted it. And it's not about knowing everything. It's about doing what we can, which leads to our final observation and we'll get to some practical stuff is that missions is witnessing the power of God through 
the Holy Spirit. It is witnessing the power of God through the Holy Spirit. This is jam-packed. We could spend a long time with this. But here again, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me, Jesus, everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I can't wait. We're going to get to practical stuff. But right now, the key word here is the word power. The word power in this passage is where we get the word dynamite or dunamis. It doesn't, it, does, it just doesn't, it not doesn't, it, it, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean just explosiveness, but it is also strength and ability, okay? Witnessing his power means demonstrating his healing, that's right, physically and spiritually. It is demonstrating his love to forgive and to restore ourselves and, and to each other. It is demonstrating his ability to transform hearts. It's demonstrating his wisdom to guide and lead your life. It's demonstrating his faithfulness to bring joy and steadfastness in your heart. You see, the power of God is to be experienced in your own life and so that others may see uh, and they can witness and they could see Jesus in you. Therefore, missions can only be done, and this is important, through the Holy Spirit. That's just it. Okay, we can't do this without Him. He's the one. He is God that is in you to be witnesses about this Jesus, amazing guy who was raised from the dead and who Father sent so that we can all be reconciled back to Him. Galatians 5.16, this is such a golden verse. I remember this was taught so much by my previous leaders. So let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Let Him guide our lives. So here comes the question. How do we let the Holy Spirit guide us in and for mission or for the missions of God, mission of God that is all around us? You see, I believe that the answer is already found in verse 8 in Acts chapter 1. When Jesus mentioned Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So we're going to have a little fun here. What if we unpack those four places and we could frame how the Holy Spirit can use us in those different areas, starting from Jerusalem? So now let's ask the question, what is Jerusalem? Where is Jerusalem? Is it literally on Google Maps, like Google Earth, Jerusalem? So every Christian, we must fly to Jerusalem. So then, therefore, now we begin discipleship. Now we begin to talk about missions. We share Jesus only in Jerusalem? I don't think so. Because interestingly enough, most, if not all of the disciples of Jesus, all 12, were not from Jerusalem. So if you say go to Jerusalem means go to your kampong, go to your house, go to your, you know, where you're from. That's not true because every, every disciple of Jesus at the time, the 12 disciples, they're from Bethsaida, they're from Capernaum, they're from Cana, some are from, some from Galilee, some are, is from Kiriath of Judah. None of them are from Jerusalem. They're not Jerusalem by Katepe or by ID but they're, they're Galileans, they're Judeans, they're, they're everywhere but Jerusalem. But yet Jesus instructed them to begin witnessing about him in Jerusalem. So why would he say that? Why would Jesus instruct the disciple to start in the capital city, even though they're from the suburbs, they're from other cities around the big capital? I believe that Jerusalem is the place of greatest influence and greatest impact. So, Here's a practical thing that we can do because missions is all around us. Number one, start with your most immediate and greatest impact. Hashtag Jerusalem. That's right. Our Jerusalem, my Jerusalem, your Jerusalem. We may have our own Jerusalem, but it is our own immediate and greatest impact, whatever that is. Let, let, let's dive into Luke 16, verse 9. Here's the lesson. The Word of God says, Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Now, the conclusion of this parable of the shrewd manager deserves its own sermon. So I'm not going to talk about that. It's, we needed a whole 30 minutes about it. But what we're learning here from the parable of the shrewd manager is that our resources is everything that we are and everything that we have, right? That's all about us. So when it terms of money, let's talk about money. Where is it used in the mission of God in your life today? How is money used in the mission of God in your life today? What about your heart? When is the last time you prayed for the mission of God to happen in your city, in your family, in, in, the, in the 
conflict right now in Ukraine and Russia. I don't know if we're watching this beyond 2022. Maybe it's like an old story. But when's the last time you pray for that? When is the last time in your relationships are you encouraging or encouraging or discouraging or, neut or neutral about missions in all of your relationships? In your relationships, are you encouraging people to go into missions or are you discouraging people to get into missions? Or about, what about your social media, right? <laughs> are you encouraging or discouraging people to be part of the mission of God in your posts, in your likes, in your comments? You see, our Jerusalems may be different, but it is all important for us. It is most influential. It has the greatest impact for each of us. At some point, some of you have, you know, have some, of, some of these have least impact and some of you have the greatest impact. Some of us have more money than others, right? And it's just a reality, okay? Some of us have more passion than others and that's okay. Some of us have more friends than others, you know? That doesn't mean you have zero friends or no friends, but some just have more networks and that's okay too. Some of us have more followers on social media than we actually have uh, real friends. That's a topic for another day. But the point is we can't compare each of our influences and our greatest impact. But the point being is that even though our impact is not all created equal, but you, one of them has the most and greatest impact. So start with the greatest and most impact, then go down the list. Maybe you have less money than him, but start leveraging your money. So it's not about comparing how much money you have, it's start leveraging now. Maybe you have less followers than her. That's okay, start leveraging the followers that you have on social media. Maybe you have less connections uh, and, and, and you know, you know, networks of people than all of them. But start leveraging because that's your Jerusalem until all of our worldly resources is getting involved in the mission of God. Your Jerusalem is where you have the most influence and impact. Leverage your worldly resources. We gotta leverage our talents and our skills. We must leverage our relationships. And that does not mean abuse. That's a whole other topic. Don't, you, there's a difference between leveraging your relationships and abusing relationships. Don't abuse it. But you gotta, you gotta leverage your relationships uh, in, your, in your Jerusalem. Jesus is asking us to begin our witness where it is the most impactful. Jerusalem. You see, Jerusalem, is, it may be different for you and I, each of us individually, but we must begin where it's most influential, where it is most impactful. Where is it? You have the answer. So start with your Jerusalem. What is your Jerusalem? Because Jesus instructs us, missions is all around us and it begins in your Jerusalem, not a physical, literal in the Middle East Jerusalem, but where is your Jerusalem? Secondly, Let's, let's try it to the second point. How else can we let the Holy Spirit guide our lives in the mission that's all around us? Number two, by staying fruitful among your family and your friends. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Stay fruitful among your family and your friends. Hashtag Judea. Now, we finally reach our witnessing of Jesus to our hometown. Now we're going back home. We're going back to our kampung. We're going back to our hood. We're going back to where we came from, our everyday lives, okay? But there's a problem. There's a problem. You know what's the problem? It's our hometown. That's the problem. Why? Because they know everything wrong about us. They know everything about us. I'm going to read Matthew 13. He then he, Jesus, returned to Nazareth, his hometown, when he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom, the power of the miracles? And they scoffed. He's just a carpenter's son. And we know Mary, his mother. We know his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All the sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? They talk about Jesus. And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them this, a prophet is honored everywhere. <laughs> except in his own hometown and among his own family. Uh, I just want to say that even though my family are already Christian, I grew up Christian per se, but it wasn't from another tradition of Christianity. So when I was born again in another tradition, in a Pentecostal tradition, it was one of the most difficult times in my life because it was, there was a disconnect between our faiths, even though we believe in Jesus, but we do it differently. And it was, it was becoming like a, a friction that happens in the home. And it was difficult. And I truly felt this. Like I was not accepted in my own hometown. In my, I was not accepted in my own house. And my, the problem that I had is this, was this, is that I was trying to convince my family 
that my faith is genuine. So I was trying to tell them, like, listen, this is how we should love Jesus. This Jesus is so amazing. And I'm not wrong, but because the tradition is different, it is, it is not, it, it doesn't rub, it, it's rubbing off the wrong way. But here's, that's, that's the thing. My problem is that I was convincing them of my faith, whereas I now know I should be demonstrating my fruit. Now, later I found out that I, I need not to convince about my faith, but I need to be demonstrating my fruit. Galatians 5, and you know this, Christian, you know this. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. You know this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And Jesus talks about this in John 15, verse 4. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. I want to talk to you, you Christians, or maybe you, you feel like you're singled out. Maybe you're the only Christian at home. Maybe you're just being misunderstood. And maybe you're being judged. Maybe you're being pressured to always deliver to be Christian. Even one mistake, one time you say something wrong, and they're like, see, hypocrite. You know, so I want, I want to encourage you today on your mission among your family and your friends, because your friends is your hometown, right? They know you. They know everything about you. Be encouraged. You are not alone, okay? There's other guys like you and me. Don't argue or debate. Don't, don't do that. But instead, pray and serve them in word and in action. Get rooted so deep in Jesus that his fruit that, produced, that is produced in you is unmistakable. It can't be Ardo. That's not Ardo. That's someone else. So stay fruitful and let them see more and more of Jesus. And you know this and less and less of you. I just want to encourage you, okay, that in Judea is so tough because you're in your hometown. You're in your kampong. Everybody knows everything wrong about you. And yet, Jesus is asking you to go back to Judea, go back to your home, and become fruitful. And, and instead of convincing and debating and arguing, why don't you just demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit in your life and that they will see Jesus in you. So, quick recap. Right? Jerusalem, your impact, Judea, your close relationships, your kampung, your friends that are close to you. Let's head to number three, Samaria. Samaria is probably the most difficult place to do missions. Why? Because Samaria represents everything about our bias and our prejudice. Okay, Pastor Chris mentioned this. PC mentioned this in part one of the series. Our natural inclination is to be excluding separating, classifying, having prejudice, impartial, right? Because like, oh, I don't know you. You're not Batak enough. You're not Tionghoa enough. You're not Medanese enough. You're not Javanese enough. You're not white enough, black enough. You know, you just, you know, right? We, we naturally exclude. And that's why Pastor Chris said. And that is the opposite of everything of who God is, right? God is inclusive. He includes, he, he unifies. He loves you wholly, holistically, he has high tolerance, right? If he has high tolerance for you and me, he has high tolerance for that enemy that you hate so much at work. Trust me, he is a God who is just. You see, he's everything but our nature. We would say, I don't know these people. We would say, I disagree with their life choices. So you just like marginalize them. I'm from a different political point of view. I'm not down with that. It's not my problem. I don't know you. They're different from me. I've had bad experience with one person. So that means that whole kind of people, they're all bad. Those are the things that we say. But Christian, I want you to look at this picture in our final home in heaven. In Revelation 21, this is an amazing picture of heaven. Are you ready? I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need for sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city. And the Lamb is its light. Verse 24. The nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. See, this is an amazing picture of unifying world that in Jesus, that we, you, we are keeping our ethnicities, right? Our ethnicities will be seen and celebrated in heaven, right? Whether you're Tionghoa, you're Batak, you're Indian, Malaysian, Nigerian, Brazilian, American, Javanese, Manadonese, should I keep going? It doesn't matter because when we go to heaven, Christian, we will still celebrate diversity because God is too creative to have only one kind of people. But we are united 
in his blood. We are united in his kingdom. So there's no room for us to have bias. There's no room for us to look at us differently because God's kingdom doesn't work like that. We're not like the world. So when we are in Samaria, here's number three. Here's a practical thing to do in number three, Samaria. Pay attention in your notes. Pay attention to your biases. Just, just pay attention. Just, just figure out why is it when I look at this person, I feel this way. Just why is it when I look at that kind of person, I feel this way. Just pay attention to it because the Holy Spirit is nudging something at you. The Holy Spirit is reminding you that it is not about race, not about language. It's not about gender. It's not about orientation. It is about something else. Pay attention because if we don't, you will go back to your bias and your prejudice ways. That's just, that's just us. That's just who we are. So we need to repent from our old thoughts because God sees them differently than you and I see them. And especially among God's people. Okay, among God's people in the church. There's no room or excuse for prejudice within God's holy community. Galatians 3 says this, there's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Christians, we absolutely have no reason to have prejudice. You can't. If you do, you need to repent today. You need to admit that that kind of thought is demonic evil and not healthy and you need to say god help me to get rid of this heart because it's not of you and when it comes to those who don't know jesus yet right we want to love them first corinthians 9 says when i'm with the gentiles this is what paul says who do not follow jewish law i will too live apart from the law so i can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. Verse 22. When I'm those who are weak, I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Man, Samaria could be one of the toughest places for you to be a witness. Why? Because we have biases. We have experiences. Remember that one time, that person, that group of people. And I'm not saying that that was not wrong. It was awful. But Christian, we can't live like this because he's calling us to be a witness in Samaria, in a place where the world says we should not love them, but we can't live like that. Let's pay attention to our biases. Let's repent from those bias. Let's see past our skin color and our experiences and our culture and get back to Jesus' culture. No pun intended about the band. Let's share the good news by being with them and not against them. And we're, we're finding our last thing. And, and, if you, and if you follow Acts 1 verse 8, there's one more place to go to be a witness. If Jerusalem is our place of impact, and Judea is our place of closest relationships, and Samaria is our perception of bias or certain people and a prejudice, Jesus wants to take the gospel even beyond Samaria to the ends of the earth. And I believe that in order to get to the ends of the earth, we must, in your notes, take the extra mile. We've got to take the extra mile. Hashtag ends of the earth. You see, our heart and our attitude and our efforts must reflect this command of Jesus. How can we get to the ends of the earth unless we walk that extra mile beyond the first mile that God is asking us to go? Now, let me read you Matthew 5. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Now, some of you, the Bible nerds, you may know this, and you say the context of that passage is actually about being mistreated or being forced to do something that we don't want to do. And that's true. I'm not saying you're wrong. You're absolutely right. Roman law requires, did you know, Jewish civilians, they have to carry Roman soldiers' stuff and gear for one mile. It is by law. Or 1,000 Roman paces or about 1.5 kilometers. Now, it's annoying because sometimes they tell you to carry their heavy armor. But taking the extra mile, to me, is how we'll bring the gospel to the ends of the earth by one mile at a time. You see, the Shema invites us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and our strength, right? That's the Shema. I love that. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5. Did you know the word strength is translated from the word ma'od, which is translated to power in Greek, 
strength in English, wealth in Aramaic, power and mind according to the Gospel of Mark. So because we ought to love God with all of our power, strength, wealth, and mind, nothing can stop us from going to the extra mile for the mission of God. That extra prayer, that extra giving, that extra loving, that extra patience, right? That extra understanding. And add anything extra that we need to be, we need to do as God's holy people. Because this is what it means to take it to the ends of the earth. It's about taking that extra mile. It's taking that extra effort. Because how can we get to kilometer 10 if we ne don't pass kilometer 9? We need to take it one kilometer at a time. We need to take it one mile at a time until finally we get to the ends of the earth. Missions, guys, is literally all around us. It's in Jerusalem, right? It starts in Jerusalem, right? It starts with your resources. It starts with your connections. It starts with your abilities and your talents. But it's not just there. God calls us to go pass through Judea. And it's tough to be in Judea because that's your hometown. Everybody knows who you are. And that's why we need to abide in His Word, right? We need to be fruitful. Don't argue or debate. Let's just stop doing that. Let's just love. Let's just become like Jesus. Let's produce fruit according to Galatians 5. And as you pass through Judea, you need to keep going to Samaria. Why? Because you need to succeed in Samaria. What's happening in Samaria? You have bias. You have prejudice. You look people in their skin color. You look through the culture, you look through the language, but that's not us. God's people is not like that. We need to pass, we look past the skin color. We need to celebrate diversity in unity. We need to see the way Jesus sees them because that's how he sees you. And as you pass Samaria, you find yourself going to the ends of the earth and because, because once you reach the ends of the earth, you may feel like, man, I want to go back. This is too much. I can't do this. I can't do this, God. And you're right. You can't do this without Him. But with Him, with the Holy Spirit, you can take it one mile at a time. One mile at a time. Every power you have, every, your whole mind, every wealth that you have, nothing can stop you from giving an extra mile because you're going to the ends of the earth with Jesus, with His Holy Spirit. Church, let's be filled in the Spirit to be His witnesses because missions is all around us. And if you don't know Jesus and it's your first time watching this and you're thinking about this Jesus guy and you're wondering what's more for him to offer, he's got so much more. But for those of us who may not know Jesus yet, who don't have a relationship with him, I encourage you and I urge you to be touched by His Spirit. And I pray that you'll never be the same again. Just as all of us, as God's holy people, who truly love Jesus, who wants to invite you in relationship with your Father, we want you to know that Jesus loves you that much. The mission is all around us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, oh God, we thank you. God, we worship you. God, we thank you for your word today that we can learn together, that we can talk about mission. And we have this opportunity as a church to learn about your word and to recognize that mission is not just missions month. It's not just when we're talking about the missionaries that we are supporting online and, and, and wherever you're calling them to go. It's not just about the times that we go to work or to school or everywhere we go in our cities. It is literally in every step that we take, mission is all around us. And we truly need your spirit, oh Jesus, because you're calling us to be your witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Help us because we get in the way. Help us because we easily forget that we are called by you to be used by you in your kingdom. And I also pray for those who don't know you yet, oh God, that you will touch them today, that you will just poke at them, you will nudge at them, and that you will remind them just how much love you have for them and that you have so much in store, not because things are perfect later, not because things will be easier per se, but because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. 
because you love them so much. So today I pray, God, that all of us not only rally together because missions is all around us, but for those who don't know you yet today, know that how much love you have for them is just so immense. May they be, be touched by your spirit today. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We worship and praise you today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Thank you again so much for joining VIPs. Don't forget to visit us at icmedan.com for more information. Follow us everywhere on social media. We are on YouTube as well. icmedan at icmedan. icmedan.com. Email us hello at icmedan.com. We just want to get connected with you. We want to know you better. See you guys next week. Stay safe, but stay committed. Thank you, Pastor Ado, for the message today. Church, we hope the message will encourage you, motivate you, and bless you throughout the week. If you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, get baptized, or just want to share your story, just email us at hello at icmedan.com. We would love to help you with the next step on your journey with Jesus. Make sure that you follow our social medias, Instagram and Facebook, so you never miss any information and updates. That's it for today. We hope you have a blessed week. God bless you, church, and see you next week.